You watch your breath coming in, going out, watch it again and again and again. Maybe someday you'll get it right. Of course, it's not so much getting that physical breath right as getting your mind's presence to the breath, its insight into what's going on, both with the breath and with itself. And that comes from paying attention, paying careful attention, being very deliberate in what you're doing. This is one of the reasons why in the forest tradition they would be very deliberate about how you do just the little things that you do every day, every day. Try to figure out what's the best way to do this. How do you store the plastic things, the plastic pails, other things, so they don't get too much sun? If they get too much sun, they're going to fry, and they won't last very long. How do you fold the towel for washing feet, drying feet? Little things like that. It's something you do every day. If you've got the time, you can think about how to do it well. Once you do things outside well like this, even though they may be little things, they're going to have an impact on the mind. because. The things that are causing trouble in the mind right now are little things, little movements of the mind. And if you just go in, out, in, out, in, out with the breath, and ask yourself, well, how much longer is this going to be? How much longer do I have to sit here? That kind of attitude doesn't get you anywhere. If you say, how do I do this well? What's the best place to focus on the breath right now? What's the best way to breathe right now? When the mind settles down, give it a chance to rest, gain some strength, gain some nourishment. And then ask yourself, is there still any little bit of stress in here? You're looking for the little things, because little things go with little movements in the mind that like to hide themselves. So try to develop this habit of being really deliberate and putting some thought into what you're doing, even if it's little things. If there are things you do day after day, you might as well do them well. Figure out what's the best way to do this. and then. How do you figure out the best way to deal with your own mind every day, every day? It becomes habitual. And it's a good habit to have. They talk about the danger of being attached to habits and practices, but then you look at the path that the Buddha teaches you, and there's a lot of habits and practices. And the things you're supposed to do day in and day out. Observe the precepts day in and day out. Try to be mindful day in and day out. Try to figure out where you're suffering day in and day out. And don't let yourself get bored, and don't let yourself get tired. There was once a student of a John Fuings, a nun, who was doing body contemplation one time, and as soon as she saw the pieces of her body all laid out, and then she decided to burn them up into ashes. Then another version of her body appeared right next to that, and then another, then another, and she said it was like fish waiting to be fried. One after another after another. And she said she got tired of doing it. And as John Fung told her, you don't get tired of doing that. They think you do this to be tired of coming back into samsara, because you do that again and again and again. Which is more tiresome? Coming back and suffering again and again, or do, doing the practices that will take you out again and again? Think about that. There was a man who once complained to the Buddha because the Buddha came to his house every day for alms. These, these monks, they come again and again. And the Buddha made that same point. Okay, samsara, again and again. Birth comes again and again. Death comes again and again. Which is more tiresome? So focus on the practices that get you out. And because you're doing them again and again, try to do them well, even little things. It's all part of the training of the mind.